So have you ever found yourself in the midst of wondering what your employees are supposed to be doing? So you've got them doing the register. You've got them helping your customers. Okay, well, what next, right? You've trained your staff. If, you, if you're watching this, hopefully you are engaged with your employees, but you've got them learning about the thing you do, the thing you sell right like when I had the adult store it was every product in the store they had to know what it was made out of what materials what you could use with it what you couldn't use with it right your operations are the same it doesn't matter if you're ringing up a register it doesn't matter if you're just sweeping the floors for the afternoon or doing janitorial work your employees are assets that if you're not deploying in the correct kind of way can really screw over your business so one of the things that you can think about is the same thing I used to do with mine is that I would give them each department over the shop in order to be able to cultivate a stronger connection to both what the customers wanted because they're boots on the ground and they know and doing boutique retail is a different animal than doing big box retail like big box retail the managers just tend to abuse you right whereas in small business retail you have the opportunity to learn and engage with your products in a much deeper, much more concise way so that way everything you pick in your shop should be hand selected by either one of you or your staff, right? People that work with you, right? They work for the money, yes, but they work with you in collaboration to see that they get a good amount of money. Don't pay your employees just minimum wage. Start them off at minimum wage. Work them up. Get them qualified and bringing in new sources of revenue so that way their salary is supplemented by the work that's being done. It's not important to be the one that has all the money and they have nothing. It's important that everybody gets to share and gets uplifted by the work that you're doing. So some things to consider are how can your employees do marketing with you how can your employees help select the products that are in your store what can you do with your employees that allow them the opportunity for advancement meaning do you want to send them out to go do booths at farmers markets getting your product and services out there into the marketplace what can you do as far as bar events or what can you do as far as private events what can you do as far as networking events like can you send off somebody to a networking event and they learn their thing or they learn how to speak about your business so that way you have assets in these people they have a vested interest in seeing the company that they're working for grow so that they can grow with it right so that as you expand your operations they become senior management and then they can train other people underneath you right now the downside of that is teaching them these skills takes time having a passion to want to make somebody grow in the information that you're giving them takes a period of cultivation right so first they have to learn the, the shops inventory then they have to learn the shops mechanisms like how the social structure of what you represent is supposed to be in the marketplace and then they should be cultivated slowly and over time, but also through the training programs that are available to like it becoming more personable, becoming more engaged, learning how to do social media influencing so that they can go online and on their, their, on your time, build out your social media presence so that way it stays and maintains congruency. So that way they get to put their voices into your business so that way their voices help your business grow especially digitally so that way you're lifting everybody up you know it was i was homeless back in the first crash back in 2008 when the world went to shit right i was working outside of an adult store or i was working at an adult store in tennessee and problems with my roommates and everything like that but i wound up getting back into it through working at pier one right so it was a basket for fake poop pen holders that this lady asked me for and a couple of weeks later 
we did because we didn't have it at the time. I'm like, no, we don't have it. And then I pulled it aside, and the the black rug she was looking for. And she's like, I like you. If you ever want to come get a better job, come see me. So I did, and that's how I got into the adult story industry like full time, and working with the that was in Savannah, not in Knoxville. Knoxville was another experience. So sorry switching up my stories um but the the fact is is that working in that field allowed me to move over into working as a buyer for the deja vu's in vegas and then eventually owning my own shop here in san diego until selling it last year and the thing about small business retail is that once you learn the products once you understand the nature and the dynamic of what your customers are looking for and how to structure your stories around talking about what the products are useful for or what the people are looking for or how you can cultivate those kinds of bonds with them that take your products beyond just the products themselves and into being like, hey, how are you doing? You know, haven't seen you for a while. In the adult store, you really can't say that because you need to maintain some anonymity, but you leave the question open-ended or, you know, you, you make friendly small talk and it's when they approach you for that familiarity like hey don't you remember I was here like we do it's just you know when you come in it's always something different so we always use it as a confidentiality policy right so it's ways that you can stimulate conversation ways that you can spark memory like it was really hard for me to remember people's names but I remember the toys they bought right because of the experience because of the story so if you can attach story to the products you sell and get your employees to start attaching stories, then they can create new sales dialogue. They can create a deeper kind of relationship with the products, with the services, with, with the things that you're trying to do. So it helps them advance faster. It helps your brand advance faster, right? So that by creating these standard operations, you've got someone who's focusing on the window displays, the interior design of the store. You've got somebody who's responsible for selecting your, if you're in books, they go to the book conventions. If you've got somebody in the, the materials, like if you've got products or things that you get at a trade show, then you can take them with you and you can help them start to cultivate the relationships between you and the products and the business, okay? If they're working other jobs, be friendly with the other job schedule don't let it take away from yours, but figure out how you can advertise for that other business inside your own. So that if they've got a fun event coming up, you can say, hey, look, I've got this you know, employee, they're, they're working over here now, it's at a restaurant, they're gonna have this party over at this date, and then you, know, you create a collaborative network. You're not doing it to suppress your employee's development, you're not doing it to, because you never know what they're gonna become. You want to be able to give them mentorship. You want to be able to give them leadership. You want to be able to do all of the things inside your operations that help them grow and develop. So that way, as they grow and develop, they have that next level of opportunity in life. So that the next job that they have, if not working for you, then they can go work somewhere else and they can get a better wage. Because they have the training, they have the experience, right? It's all about gaining the experience first and then being able to leverage it later, right? So this is what they learn what they sell and what they teach, right? From the managerial perspective of you have to get your employees teaching, you have to get your employees learning and actively engaged in your business so that way your business grows, right? So throwing events like contests inside your operations like uh, spiff programs, like if you get, you sell this toy here because it's worth so much, you get an extra dollar for every sale you get. And then they can track their sales and then you can track to see which products did what. Or you can work out deals with the vendors. So if they get, they get a couple of the products for free and then they get the opportunity to demonstrate, not demonstrate, but they get the opportunity to talk about some of the experiences or the benefits of those toys. So that way they have an understanding of what is supposed to go down, right? So, and then you have a box of freebies that you can give away or that you can, you know, depending on the situation, like if it's somebody's birthday, then you have the means to give them a birthday gift, right? Totally unexpected stuff, surprising delights, right? So it's like that kind of thing that you can do for your business that really does help engage them and their opportunities of development. So that way, not only do they have awesome stories of who you are and who you were 
for them if they when they leave your employee but they can also do different things that will stimulate the customer's experience and know that you know they're working with a good team they're supporting a good business in the neighborhood right because again you serve not just the people that you have as customers but you have the long-term clients that come back because of your relationship with the staff because you've had staff for a year or two years or three years you know you keep people around you elevate them and you give them growth from within you know and they're not gonna steal from you because they have a vested interest in making sure that the shop is better right so you build trust you build these kinds of frameworks and then you can keep people engaged keep people hungry but you're not using your authority to diminish them you're not being the bastard boss you're not intentionally scheduling them on shitty shifts you're giving them opportunities to develop so that way they have that equity of knowledge they have not just the equality of yes they are a good employee but they have the ability for advancement they have the opportunity to go and do events outside of the shop they have the ability to do and engage the community in higher and better ways right so these are just some of the tips and tricks that i've used in the past to be able to help stir employee growth so that way they're more engaged. So that way you have people that know what you're selling. They know what the benefits of what you're selling are, you know, and they can talk about it in a personal way. So it's not just, hey, you want to buy this widget because I have this thing, like buy it. No, it's like, this is what this does. This is a story about it. This is what this does. This is a story about it. Helping to unfuck your business through the client customer relationships is one of the most important things you can do as a manager, as a leader, so that way you've got something that actually can go and speak to people where they're at, right? And now for the people that work in the big box stores, you know, yeah, you have a lot of products. Every person in there should know what products are where, generally speaking. It's, if they are in a, working in a department, there should not be any of the, I don't know where that's located. It's, hey, let's go find it together. I think it was over on this aisle, and then they can go find it, right? It's never a, I don't know. It's a, I'm not sure, let's find out, right? It's seeking for a solution, even if you don't have the answer, and being honest about it, you know? Being helpful about it, going that extra step of service when you're being employed to be of service is not an extra step. It's part of the job. So being dismissive over customers, being an asshole to customers, turning people away because of your behaviors is not appropriate. Figuring out why you're turning people away because of your unsatisfaction in the job is also trying to figure out what the manager is doing wrong, what management training is needed, what other higher levels of education are needed, what different paths of engagement are required. These are the kinds of things that you have to think about. These are the kinds of things in order to be able to keep people from turning over and to keep people on staff longer and to be able to keep customers and clients longer that you have to overcome. You have to be willing to humiliate. No. You have to humble yourself. Learning and growing and being willing is not humiliation. It's humble. It's being of service. The best in the industry are of service for those industries. Right? So we have to do the same. We have to be, as managers of people, we're managing the relationships. Right? We're not myopically overseeing them as individuals. We're seeing that the situation flows in accordance with the will of the nature of the business that we're in so that we, we can serve better. So I hope that this is some insight into helping your customers and helping your employees with some tips that can move them forward in your relationship and your their